Melody Vassal's Top 100 Games of All Time. Melody Vassal's Top 100 Games of All Time. We're almost done. We're almost done. Top 10. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if this is your first time ever watching, and it might be, you really should go back and watch the top 100 games of all time introduction. But if you don't want to stick through that and you just want to watch the top 10 of Melody's top 100 of her top 1,000, well, you might have played 1,000 games. I don't know. It's kind of hard. We don't keep track. <laughs> but here are the final 10 of Melody's top 100 of all time. Are you ready? Oh, yeah. Let's do it. More 10. Faces. Faces. Now we have to be honest with you guys here. For Melody, Melody enjoys faces, uh, but I want to talk about th this. Faces is my personal copy of Faces, where I made up custom cards with all kinds of weird faces on them. Yes. The original game comes with some small cards, but we now have, I think, a thousand different faces. Uh, really, really weird people and mostly people that I have found all over the internet and I just went through and started taking pictures and some of those pictures will be imprinted on your mind forever. So while I'm showing <laughs> these pictures, Melody, why do you like this game? Um, I really like this game because I love the different faces that my dad put in this game. Um, this game was just so much fun trying to pick the right face to put down, try to fit the category and I really love picking it because you see all the different types of faces and it, this game was so much fun to play. Yeah, it's one that we often bring out. Melody will bring it and her friends really like it a lot too because everybody gets a kick out of the different faces that are in the game. Yeah. So a great party game, one that we play in lots of circumstances. It's also on my top 100 faces. Can I stop doing this now? Yes. <laughs> Number nine, Summer Awards. We don't have the box for Summoner Wars to show you because it's in a Thunderstone box, actually. Uh, but we have everything from Summoner Wars, and it's a game that Melanie and I have played against each other quite a bit. Uh, Summoner Wars is a two-player game, although you can play it more than two players. But it's mostly a two-player game in which you'd have an enemy summoner fighting someone else's summoner, and you summon creatures, and they go to, these creatures move around and attack each other by rolling dice. And you have a very small deck of cards, and you have to use that deck for your creatures and for attacking the other person. Why do you like Summoner Wars? Um, I like Summoner Wars because I just like the different types of people that you can play with, like the Jungle Elves, which are my favorite. Um, this game was a lot of fun to play with another person, trying to put out your people, go attack, and it was just a fun strategy game. Which is your favorite faction? Jungle Elves. Jungle Elves. Woo! I didn't know that, really. Yes. Well, we both like the Jungle Elves then. Well, too bad. They're mine. You have to pick a different faction. <laughs> Number eight, Mice and Mystics. Now this is a brand new game to our list. In fact, it's a pretty brand new game in general. Now, Melody has like the, the Rat of the Shard Line, Legend of Drizzids, Castle Ravenloft series, where you go through and fight monsters. This game has a very similar feel to that, but in this one you are mice, well, you're humans who are changed to mice, and you're going through and fighting cockroaches, and rats and all kinds of stuff in this game. My dad likes it when we kill the cockroaches. Yes, I do, because I hate cockroaches. <laughs> kill them all! Uh, why do you like this game? Um, I really like My Some Mystics because I love how there's like different stories that you can do. Um, you can choose your mouth, like um, the archer, which comes in after a few stories. Um, this game was a lot of fun. I liked how... You got out, fought the different animals, tried to get to one part of... Did you like how the boards flipped? Yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. That was a neat mechanic, because you could be like underground in the pipes and then come out a mouse hole, basically, and now you're in the kitchen or something. And that was some neat, neat ways. And there was a pretty good story behind the game, too. Mm -hmm. So, will these people ever change back from mice? We'll have to wait and see. Mice and mice. Number seven! Heroescape! 
Heroescape has all sorts of figures in it. We have tons of them. Uh, we have a whole wall cover. We have all these boxes here filled with terrain. I think we have more Heroescape stuff than any other game, probably. <laughs> and we've played with so many things. Melody has played with Superman and Hulk and Abomination and Wonder Woman. Wonder Boo to Wonder Woman. But I mean all sorts of different people and we but you can go up against, you know, frost giants and dragons and the ants and all kinds of things that I mean a lot of this stuff that we have is even custom made. Why do you like Heroescape? Um, I love Heroescape because you can make the board, which is really cool. I like how there's different characters that um, you can do, like put like you can pick superheroes or um, army. <laughs> um, it was just a lot of fun trying to move around the board, try to um, kill the other um, people's people. Um, <laughs> I really liked how you have to like move through different types of um, terrain, which is really cool. I think we have every single one. Yeah, we do. Um, but it, this game was just so much fun to play. And Melody plays in tournaments of this like every year uh, with Heroescape. This, uh, this year we'll make a really good army and see if you can do well with that one. All right, Heroescape. Number six, Nuns of the Rhine. Nuns on the Run is a game where you are a sneaky little novice nun trying to go out in the middle of the night to get a love letter or some cake. medicine or a piece of cake. Yes, that's, that's, that, that's what I would go out for. But anyhow, you have to sneak out. Meanwhile, one of the players is playing the abbess and the prioress who are marching around, listening quietly to see if they hear these people scurrying around and then try to capturing, capture them. Why do you like this game? Um, I love this game because every single time whenever I play this, I always get the chills like because I know my dad is like right there, but he doesn't know. Um... That that was happened the first game. He was like two um, things away from me. But that happened in a lot of the games we played. Yeah, especially my mom because she went into the little room in the big church. I got her. I got her. I remember that game. Yeah, you know, we played this game quite a bit actually, and each game really does give you that tension. I'm sitting there going, "Where are they? Where are they? I know they're here somewhere." And they're thinking, "Please don't see or hear us." <laughs> Yeah, I like how you have to get like the key to get to the room, and then get back to your own room to make pretend that you were there the whole night. Um, <laughs> I really like to play this game. Whenever my dad says like, "Let's play a game," I'm always thinking, "Nuns on the run, nuns on the run," because it's just so much fun to play. There you go, and that's why it's in your top ten. Number five, Sentinels of the Nile. Not the Sentinels of the Multiverse! Da, 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 da. Would you like to be a superhero? If you want to be a superhero, this is one of the games. Now, these are not real superheroes, like from comic <laughs> Real. These are not superheroes from comic books. They're ones that were made up for the, this game. But you work together in this game, a cooperative game. You pick an enemy, and then you pick a terrain that you'll fight in, and you have to beat that enemy. Now, some enemies are harder than others. Some enemies are really hard. <laughs> Other enemies are not quite so hard, but they all give a challenge. Why do you like this game? Um, I really like to play Sentinels of the Multi Multiverse because I liked how you can pick a superhero and then go out and try to help others defeat the bad guy or bad guys. Um, it was a lot of fun to play. I liked how you had your own deck and your own special abilities that you can use to defeat the bad guys. Um, I like the artwork. I liked how there's different types of superheroes. Um, this game was just so much fun to play, and I love how it's so cooperated. Right. All right, so there you go. Sentinels of the Multiverse, a new game to the list. And the four casting guns.
Caching guns, and this is the expansion that we almost always play with anymore, the Yakuza with the swords. Uh, in fact, I remember we played, Thanksgiving is coming up, and I remember very specifically last Thanksgiving, this was one of the games we played. Everyone around the table, we had Thanksgiving guests with swords drawn and guns drawn, and everyone pointing them at each other. Remember my first game of Caching Guns? Yes, I do. <laughs> uh, why do you like this game so much? Um, I really like this game mostly because of the actual fake swords and ninja stars and guns that you have. Um, that's like my favorite part of the game. I like how you um, like point the gun at someone and either like it's a fake or real, hoping that no one else points it at you and it's real. Um, this game was a lot of fun to play because it was fun. <laughs> it's, it was fun because it was fun? Yes. <laughs> yeah, that does make a game fun. Well, yeah. Um, I like to play this with a lot of people um, because the more people, the more um, scared I get <laughs> of whoever might point the gun at you and kill you. All right. That's cash and guns. Number three, dick dick. Dixit! A party game in which you take really weird pictures, you put one out in the middle without showing anybody, and you say something about that picture, anything you want. You can say frankincense, you can say Frankenstein's nightmare, you can say this card reminds me of the other day when it was sunny outside, or you can say, uh, blah, blah. I mean, you can say whatever you want. Everyone else puts a card down, we turn them over, everyone has to guess which card is yours. Why do you like don't this game? Don't make it too easy and don't make it too hard. That's right. Um, I like this game because I like how there's different cards that you can play. Um, to my dad, he always picks the right one because he knows me too well. <laughs> but um, I liked how you could put down a card, um, say what you wanted to say, and then try to not make it so obvious, but at the same time, not... You want at least one person to get it. Yes. Um, I liked how there's little rabbits as the... Uh, moving piece, but why rabbits? That's, um... <laughs> I don't know why there's rabbits, <laughs> but why are any of these cards the way they are? And what do you think of the artwork on these cards? Wacko. Definitely wacko. Um, these cards were just so weird, but I still like the game. Alright, well that's Dixit, which includes Dixit Journey, Dixit Odyssey, and Dixit 2. Uh, pretty much they all play the same, and we have them all smushed together in one box. Number two, Danger Fighter. A brand new game for Melody made the list here, Dungeon Fighter. Now this is a cooperative game in which you're working together to beat a dungeon. And the way you beat the dungeon is by fighting monsters. Now here's what the difference is. How do you fight these monsters? You throw dice into the middle of the board onto a target. They have to land on this target in certain spots and that's how many hit points you do. But depending on how hard the monster is, you might have to throw it with the wrong hand or under your arm or let it fall off your nose or jump up in the air. <laughs> And you might get weapons that let you do more damage, but you have to throw it, you know, off your elbow or something. My favorite card is the shield. The shield? Definitely. Well, tell me a little bit why you like this game. Um, I really like this game because I love how you just, like, throw the die onto the board, trying to make sure you, like, don't throw it too hard, but at the same time not too soft. Um, trying to not, not make it into the hole. And I'm glad that you can move around the table to do that. Um... <laughs> I really like this game because the artwork is just so weird, like really weird. Yeah, it is really strange. Um, I like how you can buy different cards to make your strengths better. Um, also, the throwing the dice is so much fun. Um, I liked how you, how you had nine lives, but why nine? Why can't it be ten? Um, <laughs> maybe you're a cat. Maybe. Wait, well, no, we're humans. Um, no, but cats have nine lives. Maybe we're humans with a cat inside. Well, anyhow, this is really a kind of a silly, fun dungeon game. And Melody, Melody she's always pulling it out to play it with people because it's just that silly and fun. And you can play with up to six people, which is really a blast. Everyone's yelling and throwing dice all over the place. So that's Dungeon Fighter. Uh. And finally, number one, 
Tales of Arabian Nights. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Tales of Arabian Nights is a story-driven game. Basically, you go through this all over the board, moving your piece around, going through a story. You'll meet a beggar and you'll have a chance to, to treat him nicely, to try to get information from him, to beat him, to buy him, to uh, steal from him. I don't know what you'd steal, but you have so many different options each time. And then those options go to this gigantic storybook with all different things going on. And I never went through the same story twice yet. Well, I have, but I played a whole lot more, I think. But this is your number one game, your favoriteest game of the favorite games. Why? Um, I love this game because it's a storytelling game, and I just love stories. Um, there's another game, Agents of Smirsh, that might go on my top 100, too, because it's just like this, but with spies. Right. Um, I really love this game because you're, like, moving around the um, fairy tale world, which is really cool looking. Um, try to accomplish your... Um, quests and just get back and keep doing it until you get as many destiny and story points. Um, I really like the stories because they're so funny or um, weird. Yes, like a gorilla talking or something like that. You turn into a gorilla. Um, this game was just so fantasy like, and I love fantasy a lot. Um, just, it was just so much fun to play. And, um, have fun and laugh at other people that didn't have a good story. <laughs> All right. Mom. Yeah, like mom. Always mom. Poor mom. <laughs> Anyhow, this is Tales of Arabian Nights. And that means we're done with the list. So another year, we are going to wrap up. But a couple things I want to say. First of all, folks, I've recorded a conclusion that gives some stats and some of my other thoughts on this list. Uh, so go watch that to kind of wrap out the whole thing here. Secondly, I'd like to thank Melody for putting this together. She really has a blast. She does all the work at putting the top 100 list together. She plays all these games. Uh, she's always talking about how she beats me in all of them, but she only <laughs> beats me in some of them. I don't want this to be... I'm just proud of you. You did a good job, and we'll see you guys in another year. Although Melody has a pile of games to review with me, so keep an eye out for that. Check out the Dice Tower, and like I said, go check out the conclusion to our Top 100. Melody Vassal's Top 100 Games of All Time